Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Welcome po at kung saan man pangpanig ng mundo kayo naroon. Welcome to our 109th, 109th episode of the Scalp COVID Deaths webinar series brought to you by the University of the Philippines. Thank you for being part of our credible online community and for all those who have just discovered us for today. Welcome po. Sana po masiyahan po kayo sa lahat po ng matututunan niyo for today and for our next webinars. The COVID-19 pandemic really has caused a disruption in the training of healthcare professionals such as doctors, nurses, dentists, and while it is necessary to address the pandemic, also equally important po to continue to produce healthcare professionals who are skilled and equipped to do more than just responding to uh, emergencies or our COVID-19 response po. So in our episode for today of the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series, we will take a closer look at how education remains to be of primary importance to the Health Sciences, Health Sciences Center of the Philippines. I'm Dr. Raymond Francis Sarmiento, Director of the National Telehealth Center, National Institutes of Health, University of the Philippines, Manila. Always a pleasure to be with all of you for our regular Friday dates. Po, no? I always look forward to Fridays because I get to share hosting duties uh, with a beloved mentor, also internationally renowned for public health communications, our adjunct research faculty at the National Telehealth Center, Dr. Susie Pineda Mercado. Dr. Susie? Hi, good afternoon, Raymond. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat, mga nakikinig, mga sumusubaybay sa ating uh, program from from all over the Philippines and all over the world. I'd like to welcome everyone. I just saw earlier that we have some people from Saudi Arabia, no, Utah, no, Lalayo. Anyway, welcome po sa inyong lahat. Uh, we are all looking forward to being with you at this, um, you know, very interesting topic. So many people registered to watch it. So I think people are really curious how we are going to continue to produce doctors, nurses, and dentists uh, during this pandemic. Anyway, as you have noticed um, in the beginning in our opening billboard, we said stop COVID is not just referring to COVID-19, but the C is for, of course, COVID-19 and, and updates on COVID problems. O is for outbreaks, V for viruses, I for infections, and D for disasters. So we've expanded uh, our discussion as much as possible. We still bring it back to COVID because it's not yet over. As you know, no, dumadami mga kaso na rinig namin. And so we keep an eye out on developments for COVID from uh, here in the country and in other parts of the world. But because you want to know the news, uh, both here and abroad, we have created a very special segment for you to bring you the news called the News Update. Okay, first up po sa ating news update. Um, did you know that uh, four days ago, I think, na balita po ito, that Roche, yung pong pharmaceutical company, they are launching an innovative dual antibody antigen diagnostic test called Alexis HCV. Ito po ay dual po antibody and antigen po na diagnostic test para sa hepatitis C. So, ito pong uh, dual uh, test na po ito, it allows for independent and simultaneous determination of early stage infection and those who are recovering or showing signs of a chronic problem. So, maganda po talaga ito, very, uh, very innovative and it's the first in the country po, no? and it's something that uh, we hope, uh, sana po ma maidala. Dito po, lalo po sa mga low and middle income countries, uh, Roche po has launched the Alexis HCV Duo Immunoassay in countries that accept the CE mark. So, mapapansin nyo po may mga, mga appliance po tayo o mga equipment uh, in the phone din po yung letter C at letter E. So, I think that's something that uh, Roche is trying to push uh, bilang sila po ay Swiss Pharmaceuticals Company. Uh, for them to be able to really test that out, ito pong bago po nilang innovation. What about you, Dr. Susie? Okay, so we've got some news from the United States. No, They have just created a new crisis hotline for suicide. And the um, question is, are they going to be prepared for, for a surge in calls? No? Because it looks like the, the rates of suicide are increasing everywhere in the world. And... Um, they used to have a 10-digit national suicide prevention lifeline, but now 
those who are in distress can call 988. Alam niyo po sa emergency, di ba? 911. Ito 988, an easy to remember three digit number for 24/7 crisis care in relation to suicide and mental health. This follows a three-year joint effort by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Federal Communications Commission, and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. So they actually, Raymond, they actually have a law to designate the National Suicide Hotline. And so people are looking forward to this. It's a very simple number, 988. It also means that you've got to have counselors all over ready to take on take on this kind of um this kind of service that's needed. Pero Dr. So, Susie doesn't mean that the 911 will go away, di ba? No, no, no. 911 is still there. And 911 is for any emergency, but this one is specific to mental health and suicide. And I think, you know, that's something we should start thinking about. Also, we can't have everything in one hotline, right? We should really have that's very right. specific, especially for Itong mental health uh, problems and suicide, which is really becoming a very big problem in many parts of the world. So that's our news for today. And um, next week, we'll be back. Raymond and I will be back with more news on the news update. Okay. So balik tayo sa ating, ano, no, sa ating topic for today. And... Um, You know, when we were talking about we were talking about this topic, we were saying we've been in the pandemic for more than two years, and uh, we have with us the UP College of Medicine, the UP College of Nursing, the UP College of Dentistry, who have implemented some ways on how to train our new clinical professionals without compromising knowledge and skills based on a collaborative roadmap for medical nursing dental education internship and even residency. Now, so ito talaga issue talaga ito eh, kasi we cannot Raymond is right when he said in the beginning we have to respond to pandemic but we have to continue to produce really high quality medical nursing and dental uh, professionals. So I think many other schools not just the University of the Philippines no we're aware of so many other schools that are innovating but for today we're going to give a platform to our colleagues at the University of the Philippines in Manila and we're going to listen uh, to what kind of innovations they have made over the past two years and how they see the future. But Raymond before we start we usually have our person on the street. That's correct, Dr. Susie. So, to set our discussion into context, and for those who are joining us for the first time, meron po tayong tinatawag na person on the street or POTS video. It's a very short video uh, that's uh, put together by uh, uh, the Stop COVID That's webinar series team po. No? And the question that we pose uh, to the common folk on the street is, uh, kayo po ba ay okay? Sa online learning, uh, ano po ba ang mga beneficyo na nakukuha po ninyo sa online learning? Please watch this. Am I okay with with online learning? Ah, uh, personally, no. Pero siguro it's based on my personality lang siguro na I like to interact with people face to face. Hindi. Iba pa rin kasi talaga yung ano eh kapag ah uh, face to face. Kasi kapag online, do tinuturuan kami no step by step ganon. Pero, iba pa rin yung na-apply mo siya? Na-apply mo siya sa patient? Yes, in one sense. Because uh, I really saw the diff... I saw how it was really beneficial for lectures. It saves in cost. Don't need to travel as much. However, I saw that with online learning, nagsasuffer talaga yung soft skills and hard skills, such as, especially, in med- especially as a medical student. Not 100% okay. Kasi parang... I- yun yan, there are advantages and disadvantages to it. I'm okay in a sense that, yun nga, yung theoretical, I think um, we have more time to study when we're at home. I'm okay, siguro in a sense na hindi, hindi na ako nahihirapang, hindi na ako nahihirapang malit kasi andyan lang naman, nasa, nasa computer mo lang naman. Madaling ma-retain yung management, yung mga diagnostic na kailangan uh, kapag na-apply mo siya sa sa ano sa setting ng hospital mas madaling marate so 
also yung kapag yung skills so mas nakakasa ka doon iba pa rin talaga kapag <coughs> um face to face kaysa sa online kasi I would say that it was helpful in terms of certain modalities of learning such as lectures but maybe SGDs also small group discussions however it is definitely not the best modality for learning things such as medical skills and your interpersonal skills. We used to do return demos for that, for the skills. Like how, for example, when um, we're asked to do a um, return demo of the breast exam, of course you can do it online, but it's still different um, when you're doing it on an actual patient or in face-to-face. So, I think it's okay to back lahat on site. Walang online. There is also that advantage na parang wherever you are, you can learn. But this is also only applicable to people who can do that. So it's not exactly something that everyone can experience. From yun nga, policies na nag ensure ng safety of students, I think first and foremost, hindi compromise yung learning. With online learning, medyo wala naman tayong choice <laughs> during these days for this. So yes, yes, so sige na, yes. Pero I definitely think it has limitations. And we have to find, schools especially, have to find creative solutions so that no one, no student gets left behind. Okay, thank you very much, TVUP. Um, very interesting, Raymond. No? <laughs> Pero palagay ko, ngayon kahit na online, may nalilate pa rin. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, parang, it's a debate, no? Parang... No, I mean, it's not a debate. It's like there's no choice, so you have to make the best with what, what you have. But it's very interesting to hear their perceptions, uh, the students' perceptions on it. No? Talagang kakaiba. Hindi ko sinabi nila, parang hindi ko naisip yun. Ha? Oh, so, ikaw ba, Raymond, anong tingin mo sa online? Um, Siyempre, you have the National Telehealth Center. <laughs> I'm a, I'm, there are things that will require, obviously, ano, uh, more face-to-face po talaga. I'm not saying that uh, online is a panacea, but I think there are benefits to doing it. The really would, uh, the ideal setup would be having a hybrid para yung mga kailangang you know, i-practical ba or ano, makikita rin. Eh. So, that, that's my son po, <laughs> Dr. Susie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's an interesting problem kasi like, like me, no, I, I'm best at like 5 or 6 in the morning. But then, if you're going to school, then you're using that best time to travel. Di ba? That's parang, correct, that's correct. Ay, parang, I think, so dapat medyo blended tsaka yung theoretical meron talagang matitinik dun sa theoretical na isang basa lang kuha na nila eh hindi ako ganun eh <laughs> kailangan ko ng maraming kailangan ko ng maraming oras kailangan ko mag so you know one lecture can make me really ano I overwhelmed That's so really it's good true. to be able to go back and anyway so ano, uh, ano chika lang we're just talking a little bit sige Raymond go ahead Ano, okay. meron niya na tayong questions about the certificate sa matin. Yes, thank you Dr. Susie and thank you TVUP for preparing that. Uh, just a little housekeeping for those who are asking, certificates of attendance will be given to those who have watched at least 50% of the webinar duration. So we have already sent out, completely sent out, uh, for webinar 1 to webinar 107. Meron pa rin po for webinar 108 na pa sinusunod pa lang po namin para maikumpleto na po namin for this week so hopefully that will be completed in the next few days um, but if you are expecting a webinar a webinar a certificate from a webinar na before 108 let's say from 1 to 107 and you did not receive a certificate for that webinar please email us at stopcovidets at up.edu.ph uh, so that we could again check your records po but for now we have already sent it out uh, for today's webinar, we will have a standard panel discussion format and after our speakers have presented, we that will be followed with a Q&A session wherein we'll be entertaining questions from Zoom and also in Facebook and YouTube. So if you have any questions, lalo po kung nasa uh, <clears throat> non-Zoom po kayo, let's say Facebook or YouTube, please put them in the comment section po and uh, our, our team po will scan uh, those uh, platforms po and will be able to uh, hopefully pick out questions uh, for that. Dr. Susie? Yeah, before we go into the webinar, you know, I get I get a lot of feedback from people that they really like the fun quiz. So it's really meant, to be, really meant to be entertaining, right? We want to make learning fun. So let's have our intro, which I know entertains you. <laughs> 
Hello? 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 Kumusta na kayo lahat? Hi, I'm Doc Trucy, the mini Doc Susie. And I'm Doc Radar, the mini Doc Raymond. Are, Are you ready, ready to, to have, have fun? fun? Simply open your browser to www.slido.com and enter your code to participate. We will discuss your answers during the panel discussion later on in the program. We will have it flashing on your screen in a bit and we look forward to your answers. Masaya at madali lang ito. Join na! Okay, thank you so much. Ay, nakakatawa talaga ang ating animated version ito, ito. with, their, uh, with their, our own alter egos. Can we have it on the Zoom screen? There we go. Okay. For those who are joining our pre-test outside of the Zoom, you can open your browsers and type in slido.com and when you are prompted, uh, type input 5405717. That's 5405717. Or you can scan the QR code on the screen. The first question that we have, uh, is as follows, are we going back to what was before in terms of teaching and learning? Ano po ang sa tingin po ninyo na, yung opinion po ninyo, tingin nyo po ba, ibabalik pa rin po ba tayo doon? It's just a yes or no question. Um, well, karamihan po, uh, as of now, uh, sinasabi niya yes. <coughs> uh, dito po sa Zoom, uh, for, dito po sa Slido, uh, konti pa lang po sumasagot, so it's 100%. So we we will be tackling that later on. <clears throat> but before we go into a second question, we would like to greet those from the Luis Hora Memorial Regional Hospital in Bauco Mountain Province. Those watching us from the Philippine Dental Association in Ermita, Manila, from Cebu City in Vicente Soto Memorial Medical Center. Um, we have those from Vill Valladolid District Hospital in Bacolod City. Uh, we also have St. Elizabeth Hospital in General Santos City in Sok Sargen. And then finally, Philippine Coast Guard Medical Service Lagindingan in Misamis Oriental. So uh, those also watching from the National Children's Hospital in Quezon City and from the EAC, Emilio Aguinaldo College in Cavite po. Uh, special po ang ating pretest for today dahil po tatlo po ang ating katanungan. So our second question. With limited face-to-face -face patient encounters, what are the alternative ways of developing clinical skills? Single, a single answer lang din po. Is it number one, simulation? Number two, video-based? Number three, virtual lab? Or number four, virtual clinic? We'd like to greet those again. Ito po, uh, from De La Salle University, from CEU Manila School of Dentistry, from Cavite Naval Hospital, Rizal Medical Center in Pasig City, <clears throat> Manila Central University and National Teachers College. Also, our international viewers from the Oman College of Health Sciences in North Batina in Oman, Ripas Hospital in Bandar Seri, Begawan, Brunei, Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam, Bangkok, Thailand, those from Saudi Arabia, specifically from King Saud bin Abdulaziz University for Health Sciences in Riyadh and University of Ha'il. Uh, those watching from Doha, Qatar, Ludici Ali University of Blida II in Algeria, <clears throat> the University of Fiji, Lautoka, the UP International Nursing and Healthcare Forum in Rolling Hills Estates in California, Philippine Nurses Association in Alberta, Canada, and finally, St. Eustatius Auxiliary Home Foundation from Oranjestad, uh, Netherlands in the Antilles. Uh, greetings din po. Uh, to those watching from the Paramount Medical Center in Lipa City, Batangas. From St. Paul College in Pasig, uh, Pag-asa Hospital in Binangonan, Rizal, uh, and Baliwag University in Bulacan. Our third question naman po is our final pretest question. Which practices can minimize risk of COVID-19 infection of the students? Uh, single answer din po ulit. Uh, number one, vaccination. Is it number two, PPE? Number three, improve ventilation number four maintain physical distancing or number five ang ating all of the above <laughs> may give away po. but we will leave our zoom poll and slido open as we continue on with our program our speakers will comment on the answers later on during the panel discussion so please 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 so if you want to be able to let's say uh, remember what will be ta uh, your takeaways from this webinar we hope you'll be able to participate in our fun quiz. Over to you, Dr. Susie. Okay, thank you very much, Raymond. Well, we say we always try to bring you the best 
experts and speakers that we can get. And today is no exception. We have the Dean of the College of Medicine of the University of the Philippines, the Dean of the College of Nursing, and the Dean of the College of Dentistry. And it was really very nice to have them in the prep preparatory meeting. Marami kami na pag-usapan. And we really want to share, share them with you. So our first speaker today is not new to you. Uh, she she um, sometimes closes our, our webinar and has that gift of summarizing. Um, she's internationally recognized as an expert in the field of otolaryngology. She pioneered cochlear implantation surgery and other implantable hearing devices in the Philippines for the surgical restoration of hearing, especially in deaf children. So in her field of expertise, naku, the best po ito, kilalang kilala po ito, pero siya po ay napabahal talaga sa atin because she has been the dean of the College of Medicine during this pandemic. I think everybody who is dean during this pandemic really had to go through uh, several rings of fire. No? Mahirap talaga. Pero siya po ay visionary. Uh, she has led uh, the UP College of Medicine through this very difficult time. And she has also mobilized a lot of support and resources to improve the facilities and the ways of teaching. So I don't know what else to say, just, just that we really admire and respect her as our Dean. So we'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Charlotte Chong, the Dean of the UP College of Medicine. Charlotte, welcome. Hello. Can you see me? Uh, teka. Not yet, Dean. Um, okay, yeah, yes. Okay, okay na po. Okay na, yes. Thank you very much for the very kind introduction, uh, Susie. So uh, it's really been a challenge and uh, well, maybe I can share my slides. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Wala ka pa sa presentation mode, Charlotte. Isa pa. Yun, so that, okay. There we good go. To go. You're good to okay, go. Thank you very much. So actually, um, you know, uh, when I started as the 17th Dean in 2018, uh, my flagship program was INSPIRE. Uh, I stands for infrastructure. Uh, S for science and discovery, P for partnership for progress, I for innovation and leadership, R for resource generation and stewardship, and E for empowering, embracing wellness. No, so I think um, this uh, this new normal is really just an, a trite action for whatever all of us have been experiencing during this uh, COVID nineteen pandemic. And uh, we'd like to say that, uh, as you know, when PGH became a COVID referral center and medical students were not allowed to uh, be in PGH, it was really su such a challenge that uh, it entailed the whole community to be working together. And when our professors, esteemed professors, started uh, succumbing to the virus, as you know, uh, during the initial phase of the pandemic, talagang unnerving yung experience na yon. And I think that really propelled us to really work hard and think of innovative ways as how we can still produce the, the medical graduates that our country really needs, you know, especially during a time of a pandemic. So um, in many fronts, our faculty led, uh, as you know, they actually uh, volunteered their services uh, with government, IATF, NITAG. They did rapid reviews. They look at the evidence. They even counter the fake news and the infodemic. And uh, of course, uh, our students uh, also joined us in, this, uh, in these efforts. So I'm really very proud to be a leader of a community of scholars Now, basically is really dedicated to, to the country and its uh, healthcare needs. So let me first describe the UPCM basic medical education program because this is where we're start, our starting point is. Um, our mission and vision is leadership and excellence in community-oriented medical education directed to the underserved. And uh, when we uh, finish or graduate um, a, a physician, basically, these are the attributes. Uh, they can work as a medical or specialist, a medical practitioner or a specialist. They can be an educator, a teacher, a leader, a manager of a health uh, care system, facility, a social mo mobilizer, or even a basic science researcher. And uh, when you recall Charles Boland, five-star physician of um, uh, ascribed in the WHO, we actually added a six-star, no? And this is physician scientists with a nationalist fervor, which we started uh, during my first term as dean in 2018. Let us look at the evolution of medical curriculum at the college. Uh, 1907, uh, when we started as a medical school, it was a Flexnerian curriculum. 
Uh, it took around 75 years before we could actually think of an intermed, which is competency-based curriculum, which uh, over the years in 2004 became an organ system integrated curriculum. And in 2016 become, became outcome-based Aussie curriculum. And I'd say that in 2020, this Aussie outcome-based curriculum had to really be modified to be a pandemic ready curriculum. So if you look at the traditional method of uh, delivering medical education, the intermed program of seven year of the College of Medicine basically uh, will emphasize uh, ha having uh, knowledge, skills, and attitudes of all our graduates with uh, uh, organ system integration, competency-based, student-centered, small group discussions, uh, complaint-based and community-oriented, and of course, evaluation will have to in include integrated problem solving rather than discipline-based recall. And uh, Dr. Uh, our Chancellor, uh, former Dean um, Ramon Arcadio, actually uh, co considered the spiciest curriculum for the College of Medicine, which is student-centered, problem-oriented, uh, integrated, community-oriented, uh, um, emphasizes uh, uh, an individual learner for life uh, with elective offerings, with societal responsiveness and team-based approach. And the uh, adjustments that we had to do with COVID-19 uh, referred to the academic schedule that had to be shortened because of UP system uh, requirements. So we canceled all the electives, We uh, especially off campus. The shortened course duration had to undertake uh, some changes in terms of being able to deliver the course courses in two phases for our LU5 to LU7 or the clinical, clinical years para they can rotate uh, to all the specialties uh, during the first phase so that uh, when there's a surge, uh, basically they can rem they can do all remote. No, at least they have already some in-person experiences. Um, the learning outcomes have to review and adjust to essential the must know and the must do, especially in the clinical years. Our teaching learning methodologies were actually transformed into to being able to be delivered through our learning management system. We have two Canvas and the UP Manila VLE. And uh, there were a variety of learning strategies. Uh, there was increased use of asynchronous learning. Uh, we conducted uh, bridging skill courses for anatomy and also clinical skills training for LU4, for LU5 before they had actual patient encounters in PGH. We even offered a uh, all our students free enrollment in a Harvard Medical Online course for biochemistry and uh, pharmacology. And we've been doing it for uh, 450 students in the past two years and we'll enroll 220 more uh, before the next academic year. The assessment had to be conducted online. Uh, we actually had uh, new uh, online assessments like the NeuroOSCE and uh, self-assessment exercises to improve learning and provided a lot of so psychosocial support to all our students, our faculty and employees with mindful training sessions, with uh, some leniency in the academic course requirements and the rules so that uh, we are able to um, basically help our students. And uh, we developed really a good system of uh, psychosocial support that's really more readily available to our community. Luckily, we already had um, uh, investments in uh, virtualization of our campus even prior to the pandemic. Kaya nung mga June 2020, uh, three months after the pandemic, we were able to launch our virtual campus, which is our, our UPCM web portal, single sign-on for all the services for our, our learning management system to library resources for thesis module, for research. All the forms were downloadable. You can be cleared uh, to the different departments online. We have free downloads, apps. Uh, so everything that exactly what you need uh, on site would be available already uh, uh, digitally uh, in our web portal. And we already had plans to actually build the medical sciences building. What we did was to create a bubble. No, Our construction workers were all on site. We provided free testing. And when uh, there's going to be an infection, we made sure that we took care of them so that we were able to soft launch our new medical sciences building uh, last July 15. And we hope to be able to open this to our new uh, students uh, in the next academic year. So you see the new auditorium here. Uh, it's actually LEED certified. We have uh, solar panels, we have gray water. So we have artwork in all the walls. Basically, it's going to be like a virtual living museum. And as you know, the UPC ball is a platform for biomedical device, which was uh, converted to a COVID-19 response uh, team, which is now uh, heavily uh, involved in about 10 projects uh, funded by the DOST, about 146 million for biomedical device. So allows creativity for faculty and students who would like to embark on this. Uh, we work with the UP College of Engineering. Uh, around 1.3 billion pesos of research funding uh, as of this year. 
90% of that uh, covered by UPCM faculty. And uh, we had partnerships with the telco companies for connectivity assistance. We improved uh, research capacity for even for the country. We were actually um, um, recognized by the USDPCHRD. We worked with CHED uh, for some of the needs that we had for our students. And our alumni uh, gave us funds for uh, making sure that our National Sciences Journal, the Acta Medica Filipino, can be online. A monthly issue already, research awards were given. Uh, PhD faculty development uh, because of the donation of UPCM Class 67. Our students even helped uh, solicit uh, PPEs. They even volunteered on site for the UP Manila Bayanihan uh, Operation Center or like the call center of UP Manila in the pandemic. And we are determined to deliver new pathways, uh, new programs like the combined MD Masters in Clinical Epidemiology, the MD Master in Public Health, uh, we have about 20 programs now being uh, revised uh, in terms of curriculum, and we are also determined to start a, a, a track for academic and research track for residency and fellowship, so that they can have dual degrees of MS and PhD uh, during their training years at PGH. And you can see here what we innovated uh, last year. We had the LEAP one. Uh, we had donations from the sorority, the Phi uh, group, and they gave us uh, virtual anatomy tables uh, for medical education. And this year, we also got donations over a weekend for 3.7 million worth from UPMASA officers and our donors and Mondinisin to be able to procure plastinated models because uh, we have uh, we lack cadavers now because of COVID, no? uh, because most of them were being cremated. And so um, we even outsource uh, online resources with the HMX, with Harvard Biochemistry and Pharmacology, as I mentioned. She had gave us 14 million to buy a remote slide scanner that will allow us to actually digitize most of our con uh, collections for histology and histopathology. And we are partnering with Harvard for so many other areas. This is the visit in 2019 prior to the pandemic and the last visit uh, just about uh, last July 7 of this year. And we can see here that uh, our students continue to excel. They continue to top the physician literature exam even during the pandemic. We continue to get a lot of do uh, donations from our donors and benefactors from government agencies for our research trust, for our uh, infrastructure development. But most importantly, I would say is that we continue to empower and embrace wellness. And uh, this was really more important because uh, we had about at least 8 million pesos worth of Pantawid or student aids for those who had connectivity issues, for those who were affected by typhoons, uh, so we continue to give them mobile packs, uh, mobile connectivity loads uh, up to this semester, no? and uh, give uh, course packs. We deliver them to them uh, what, for what, by whatever means, even sometimes hand deliver them uh, through our friends. And um, when they come to campus, we give them care packs, uh, we free PPEs, masks, elastomeric masks if they fail the fit testing for masks. And they're so happy with their iconic uh, tote bags uh, provided by the UP College of Medicine. And in return, they lead researchers. 10% of our researchers are student-led. They continue to, to be active in advocacies. Uh, they even win international contests, for example, the Medicina and the APRU uh, Global uh, Care uh, Competition. And they contribute a lot of articles to our uh, official organ, the Inspire uh, magazine that's available uh, in our website as well as in our Facebook. And we have uh, this crisis management team that uh, has a lot of students uh, partnering with our faculty for pag-aaral, uh, kalusugan ng katawan, pagkalinga. And our efforts basically get recognized by our international co colleagues. Uh, we were invited to talk about academic uh, partnerships and strategic partnerships in the last Global Innovation Forum in Washington, D.C. Uh, with uh, the Association for uh, Health, Academic Health Centers and the Association for Am American Medical Colleges. So the UP system actually provided uh, three modes of delivery. The model one for... Uh, for purely remote, the model two, which is blended activities involving both online and in-person learning, and the mod model three, which is hybrid activities with the same activities being delivered synchronously and in-person and online. So we will uh, be able to employ all of these three models. Uh, for our LU3, uh, which is our first year proper, it is completely remote and online assessment. For LU4, it's going to be blended of in-person with combined in-person and online assessments. But for LU5, 6, and 7, it's going to be a blending of in-person learning at the hospital and community, as well as with online lectures and discussions. But it will also involve performance-based evaluation and in-person examinations. 
So look out for that. And the characteristic basically is a flexible curriculum with uh, inclusivity. Uh, walang iwanan. Uh, we, we will prepare course packs for those with connectivity issues. We will continue to support our students in terms of financial grants. And uh, just like to share with you a video that was actually created by Dr. Pipo Bondok, our, our, the, the chair of the Department of Anatomy. Um, uh, and this will show you what we did for our, our first year students for their anatomy. Uh, last year and this year with the leap ones and two. So we're actually very proud of this. In the midst of a pandemic lockdown, we innovated by creating a teaching program called LIP. LIP stands for Learning Enhancement in Anatomy Program. This is an intensive curriculum laboratory immersion. Silent mentors, human uh, categories. So you can see here the different modalities, the uh, plasminated models. We had nine human body parts, uh, head and neck, spine, the intracranial, the brain. We have feel soft and bulb cadavers for simulated procedures. We allow them to practice. These cadavers, we have the, the human dissecting, uh, dissection anatomy tables. And we even had endoscopy no? for, for us to be able to demonstrate the structures like the larynx. reality dissection, we have light and virtual microscopy with the digital scanners that we are now able to provide and uh, some educational videos for dissection for our students. The whole of is that the whole uh, department and all the faculty came in to support our students and supervise them throughout the course. Uh, very conducive to teaching and learning for our students. Our family also enjoyed it. And uh, we made sure that everybody was vaccinated. Not a single uh, student got infected uh, for last year and even for this year. And really just to all inspire them to be the future physicians, our frontliners. So, so the whole uh, class of uh, LU3 uh, will now be uh, grad going to be their second year for the incoming uh, incoming year and uh, we are now we, we are now able to add uh, about 30 more uh, to our students uh, population and we are really excited to welcome them to partake of the history of honor excellence service to our nation and the world and of course I'd like to acknowledge my dean's management team um, all the different people listed here are uh, Upmafi with Dr. Rodisi, Dr. Mahia. Uh, the UP Medical Foundation, our Chancellor, our President of the University, our students, faculty, alumni and donors, and benefactors, because we could not have done it without the whole community uh, working together in order to deliver the best medical education that really our students deserve. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much, Dean Charlotte Chong, UP College of Medicine. Um, Grabe, <laughs> tsaka si Pipo, ano, siyempre, yun ang mga humanities major. So for other experiments, 30 years ago was the AB Humanities Program in Medicine uh, for pre-med. No? Anyway, you can see all the hearts and the clapping, but wow, talaga, Raymond, parang gusto kong mag-aral na anatomy ulit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Iba klase na anatomy ngayon. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, parang it's, uh, I don't know, it's like, despite all the difficulties of the pandemic, somehow we are emerging with even better Uh, yes. better, better approaches But, to teaching. Yeah. So and I would say it's not really a new normal. It's even a better normal. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Galeng, galeng talaga yung visionary to si Sharon. Galeng. Very nice. Okay. Very, very good. Okay. So, uh, Raymond, I'll introduce the next speaker and then you'll introduce our third speaker. Okay, Bayon? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So, our next speaker, I want to introduce her because I know her well and I've worked with her for, I don't know, the longest possible time. Uh, when I started working in WHO, one of the first persons I met who was really so good at developing educational materials was a young nurse called Sheila Bonito. And now she's the dean of the College of Nursing of the University of the Philippines College of Nursing. Um, she, she has been an advocate of development and implementation of all kinds of training programs for nurses. Ano eh, parang ito yung napakagaling sa advocacy, magaling sa policy. You know, sort of broke, she broke a lot of, uh, what should I say, glass ceilings for nurses. And I'm just so happy to hear that she was dean of the College of Nursing. She was also professor of the UP Open University Faculty of Management and Development Studies under the Masters of Arts in Nursing program. So, Uh, we are just so happy. I don't know why we're just so happy, but we're so happy to have her here, knowing also that she will be speaking on behalf of a very, very important part of our human resource uh, pool, which is our nurses, no? who here and abroad have been at the front line of the pandemic. And we just need to continue to, uh, to develop and to um, support our nurses, our Filipino nurses who are world world class. Anyway, uh, my my pleasure to to um to welcome Dr. Sheila Bonito. Sheila, welcome. Okay, thank you very much, Doc Susie. And it's really my pleasure and honor to be part of the uh, Stop COVID Deaths webinar. Uh, hindi ko nga alam, but ngayon lang ako na-invite. But I've been watching your episodes and congratulations for the Golden Peel Award. So that's really, I think, the a well-deserved award for all the innovations that you've also been doing uh, for the community, not only of UP, but I think of uh, the entire world, wherever uh, Filipinos are, and maybe even other countries who are uh, also benefiting from our sharing. So, but today I'd like to share with you what the UP College of Nursing has been doing in terms of innovating teaching and learning. So uh, the College of Nursing of UP is a CHED Center of Excellence and also a WHO Collaborating Center for Leadership in Nursing Development. So let me just share my screen. Okay. Yeah, it, it took a while, but uh, here it is. Yeah, we need to go to presentation. Okay, okay. so. Yep, perfect. So, um, okay, so I'll be focusing on um, resilience and excellence in the, amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. So as I mentioned, um, our role as a Commission on uh, Higher Education Center of Excellence is also to share our best practices in uh, nursing education. And... Um, Uh, we've seen the, the, what uh, the College of Medicine has been doing as well in the innovations. And there are some, I think, similarities. And there are also some uh, differences, I think, in how we're conducting these innovations. So um, let me just uh, give a brief uh, review of what happened in the last two years. So imagine it has been more than two years. So we know that... Um, The pandemic started in March 2020, and we're, we were still in the middle of, I think, that academic year. And just like many countries in the world, we had to uh, close our, uh, our many of our institutions. So uh, because of the uh, because of the outbreak, and through the series of uh, surges, so from March of 2021 to September of 2021, the Delta outbreaks. Then the January of this year, when Omicron also started. So in all these uh, surges, uh, we also had to be um, agile and uh, resilient in terms of ensuring that we can uh, continue offering the courses that we have in our nursing education program. 
So for the nursing education in general, not only for UP, we know that uh, schools have closed, clinical practicum were stopped, and faculty development were also delayed. And uh, this also exposed uh, some issues uh, such as underinvestment, for example, in nursing education. So how can we ensure that uh, we can continue offering the nursing education and continue producing competent nurses if we don't have enough investments in the nursing education sector? So just like uh, all nursing schools in the Philippines, we had to shift to flexible learning. And uh, on July, I think, um, July 2020, the Commission on Higher Education actually issued a memorandum of order outlining the different modes of teaching and learning that can guide the higher education institutions uh, how to continue with the programs. But even before the issuance of this um, CHED memorandum order, the UP College of Nursing already started shifting its courses to online. Uh, for example, to ensure that batch 2020 would really graduate on time within the same academic year. And also that the remaining lessons of the of that last semester will, will continue and would be finished. So, but we had to be guided as well by the direction of the Commission on Higher Education in terms of defining the different uh, teaching learning modes. And so what we did uh, in preparation for the, uh, for the next academic year, and that's the 2020, was really to design, redesign our courses uh, to ensure, for example, um, a decoupling of courses that uh, we can deliver remotely, for example, lectures and some laboratory and clinical field practicum had to adapt uh, different uh, modes of learning. And I will show some of this in a while. But I think most importantly, the faculty members had to also undergo some training in terms of how to redesign their courses. And this is where uh, the planning of the course, selecting of learning resources, writing study guides, learning activities, and planning the assessment uh, was really important. So all of our faculty members had to undergo this training. And after we've done this, we also shared the same um, uh, course uh, to other nursing schools as our uh, mandate as a CHED Center of Excellence. So in part of the redesigning courses, we had to develop course packs. And uh, some of these elements are common in the open university wherein there's a course guide, there are modules with learning resources and activity guides for students. And the uh, learning activities should uh, include not only uh, comprehension, uh, but should also include uh, inquiry or problem solving skills, collaborative uh, approach to learning, uh, production, and even uh, how to demonstrate practice, even though it's done online or remotely. And finally, planning assessment. So how the assessment should change given the new modes of teaching and learning. So these were all parts of the uh, retraining, retooling of our faculty members and other nursing schools that we have invited to be with us. And of course, one of the main ingredients as well in putting together all these um, practices now are the learning management systems. Fortunately for UP Manila, we already had learning management systems like Moodle and Canvas and faculty members were already used to uh, using these uh, platforms for their courses as a supplement. But this time it has to be the, the main classroom for many of the courses. And we also had to be familiar with Zoom, the, how we navigate and how we facilitate Zoom, meet, uh, Zoom meetings and Zoom webinars. And we had to go look into our collections of video-based learning uh, some of them are actually available in our, uh, 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 in our libraries, but more than that, uh, there are um, uh, videos that were already developed by faculty and uh, staff in the previous years that we were able to reuse for, uh, for the lessons for embedded in the learning management systems. And we also created virtual clinics. So this one is uh, giving us the... Uh, giving us the, 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 the scenario for the clinical practicum exposure that later on they will actually go through when they go back to the hospitals. But the emphasis here is the imagined hospital setting where the students are required to perform nurses tasks such as conducting health history and physical examination, identifying nursing problems and interventions and documenting care. We also made use of 
existing electric, uh, electronic medical records of the Philippine General Hospital so that uh, there's also familiarity from our students on how to use the forms that eventually they will also be using uh, when they go back to the clinical face-to-face -face sessions. So we maximize the use of these um, learning innovations in uh, making our students familiar and confident in using all of these uh, materials. And for the community um, exposure, since there was no way of going back to the community with the transmission ongoing, we shifted also to telehealth. We use telehealth uh, for students to be connected with patients referred to by the health centers for health screening and health education sessions. And individual case management and family health nursing interventions were supervised by faculty nurses in coordination with local government health staff. So this happened particularly in our communities in, in uh, Amadeo. And so when the uh, CHED memorandum order or circular in 2021, allowing limited face-to-face -face classes, uh, we, we were getting ready for the gradual reopening of the campus. And uh, we invested in the engineering controls, in the renovation of ceilings, and uh, improving ventilation in the lecture rooms and in the skills laboratory. And we also followed the minimum public health standards, so ensuring that we have guidelines and protocols that, uh, that the faculty, the students, and staff can, can follow once we have opened the, the, uh, the college for uh, limited face-to-face -face classes. We also provided signages, improved our signages to ensure that uh, this uh, minimum public health standards will, follow, will be followed. We had a health screening uh, protocols as uh, guided by the uh, university's uh, uh, protocols as well. And the referral system emphasizing that uh, there are also steps to be taken by the, by the College of Nursing in case there are cases of, um, of uh, COVID amongst the, uh, the constituents. So there's a designated isolation um, rooms in the building itself where uh, students can actually wait or staff or faculty wh while they're waiting for, for their uh, swab. So in all of this, uh, we, when finally we were given the, uh, the certificate of authority by the Commission on Higher Education, July 2021, so we were able to implement the limited face-to-face -face classes uh, of our uh, students, particularly our third year and fourth year students. So what, uh, what was, I think, uh, important here, and I'm sure many of the nursing schools can relate, is that the need to observe the 410 principle. So making sure that the face-to-face -face, uh, sessions would only be four days and to allow for a 10-day quarantine period to ensure that no transmission would happen after the face-to-face -face sessions. And also some restrictions in terms of the class size to ensure physical distancing and the regular monitoring and reporting of uh, health status amongst the students and faculty. And of course, the emphasis on the minimum public health standards. And uh, you can see also in this video, the signages that had to be prominent and also the use of uh, PPE and also um, hand washing and also um, alcohol and sanit sanitizers inside the building. So this is the skills laboratory where uh, eventually students were actually uh, had to go for their, for their uh, skills laboratory practicum. So these are the simulation laboratories when eventually our students came back to the classroom and this was around uh, August of 2021. And we had to ensure that they were vaccinated, uh, that they had PPEs, there are wash areas, and there were orientation as well to the uh, health and safety committee guidelines on, on uh, health and safety and also the PGH nursing service, biohazard and infection control orientation for the eventual uh, visits to the hospital. But many of the uh, mannequins that we have in the skills laboratory were used. And uh, some of them are low fidelity, but there are also high fidelity mannequins that were used to customize some of the case management for different uh, conditions of patients. And some specific skills uh, like suctioning, like nasogastric gastric tube feeding and 
wound care and ostomy care were also uh, demonstrated by our students. Then finally, when we were able, when we were given the certificate of authority to go back to our hospital, which is the Philippine General Hospital, we were able to allow our students the exposure in the actual wards. Um, but this one, this was actually delayed because of the Delta, uh, Delta cases then. So I think it was around November when finally we were able to go back to the clinics. And only this uh, February of this year, when we were able to go back to the communities. So as we know, it's not only the exposure to the hospitals, but we also need our students to go back to the communities for their practicum. So we ensured again that students were vaccinated and boosted and that they're aware of the protocols to minimize the risk of infection in the community. And uh, just like the College of Medicine, we also had to ask our alumni for some support for our students. And they've been generous in providing um, laptops, internet data, and even Wi-Fi devices um, so that uh, this can actually be used by our students for their online uh, learning. And for uh, mental health, we ensured that we had a Zoom kumustahan with students. Uh, wellness checks, mindfulness activity, and also psychological safety. So having said all that, um, we're now looking at the, uh, the future. So as we now move for more students going back to school, we believe that uh, there's really no, uh, no going back to the old ways of teaching and learning. And it's not simply going back to school for lectures and activities. So the threat of, the, of infection is still there and there will be other challenges in the future. And um, how we will change our teaching and learning and how students should also change behaviors in terms of how they will learn, we'll have to be able to provide support for all this. So for example, uh, we want to put emphasis on pedagogy. So putting instructional design at the center of all these teaching and learning activities making sure that all these elements are provided for in terms of time, connection to families and students, uh, engagement, equity and flexibility, feedback, collaborative learning, and social and emotional learning. And we want also to ensure that um, learning constructivism will be uh, demonstrated, that teachers can create scaffolding so that students are guided on how they can build from their prior knowledge and how to become more independent uh, learners and become more self-directed. So emphasis also on active learning and authentic assessment. So as we change our teaching learning modalities, we also need to review how do we assess performance. And uh, one of the things that we've been doing even before the pandemic is portfolio assessment, but, uh, but some modalities as well are done on, in terms of uh, how, what's the evidence uh, to be submitted by students in ensuring that they are actually able to perform uh, the, the, the competencies that were set by the curriculum. So finally, this is my last slide. So um, we are uh, truly grateful for all the support uh, that's been given to the College of Nursing by the University of the Philippines, Manila, in terms of all the, the, the uh, the re-engineering controls that were done, the renovations, and uh, all the learning uh, um, platforms that, uh, that, that we are using. And um, as we continue to strive for excellence in nursing education, we are inspired by the nurses who are really in the front lines. And we need to invest in nursing education to ensure that we continue producing competent nurses who are really needed by our health system. And you can see here in this slide, uh, one of our graduates who are uh, who is still working in the Philippine General Hospital. So with that, thank you very much for this opportunity for sharing what we are doing at UP College of Nursing. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, that's uh, Dean Sheila Bonita of the uh, UP College of UP College of Nursing. Um, and Sheila, you can see all the art and the laughing. Even when we were talking with mga hearts and mga labas, no, a very excellent presentation and really gave us an overview of uh, yung talaga expertise ni Sheila, you know, yung education, no? parang how learning uh, can be modified and done in a very flexible way. Okay, Raymond, over to you. 
Thank you so much, uh, Dean uh, Sheila. And uh, we move on to our final Dean uh, of the three Deans uh, for this webinar. Uh, so we've already had medicine, we've already had nursing, dentistry naman po. He is an associate professor in prostodontics and is the Dean of the UP College of Dentistry. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Danilo Magtanong. Dean Danny. Uh, yes. Uh... It says un I'm unable to start the video, but I am. Yeah, I start my video now. Okay, thank you. So, thank you very much, Dr. Raymond, for the introduction. Uh, I'll now start sharing my. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. If you can go to presenter mode, sir. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, go ahead, go. Sir. Yes. So, thank you so much for inviting me here. Uh, to share with the uh, uh, public about uh, what's going on with the uh, College of Dentistry of the University of the Philippines. And also, uh, I'm sure all of my, my, our colleagues in the uh, dentistry profession, uh, education, will benefit from it. So here we go. So first of all, I'd like to talk about the context of dental education as we see it traditionally uh, from years back, uh, also from the College of Dentistry. This is essentially what we follow uh, because there is a lot of uh, premium to skills acquisitions demanded by uh, the profession and also by uh, the community. Uh, the context of uh, dental education puts a high, a very high premium to skills acquisition because it involves complex and precise performances. And because uh, unique in a dentistry program, is the skills that's demanded by uh, prof the profession and the society. Uh, I'll focus this uh, presentation on the training program which is uh, towards skills acquisition. So the progression of training experiences in terms of uh, skills acquisition is uh, starts with working on teeth, natural teeth specimen or models. It's our synthetic teeth. Uh, we call it type of don't, mounted on blocks and the students start to uh, you know uh, prepare some cavity uh, there to receive restorations and sometimes also they will progress into uh, using uh, articulated jaw models right here uh, we call it the phantom patient or phantom head also known as the mechanical uh, simulator before going into real patients what we refer to as patient care. So, uh, innovative techniques and, and, and strategies is not new to the college. Uh, we, we were starting already to, um, to, to go into innovative and more creative ways of uh, teaching and learning uh, procedures or processes. Uh, what the pandemic did was really to catal catalyze uh, its uh, 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 institutions. Uh, right now, we are looking at the flexible teaching learning strategies, which uh, will be a combination of many methods that we have heard from, you know, all over. Uh, could be digital or non-digital uh, mode, the te technology to be used, primarily for continuity of inclusive and accessible education. Uh, it can also be online, offline, and or blended modes of teaching and learning processes. Uh, at the start of the pandemic, um, we, we, we were all forced to go to some innovative modalities like the online mode. So therefore, therefore considering uh, the skills uh, acquisition uh, direction of our college, uh, virtual laboratory sessions were uh, instituted for preclinical and clinical courses minus the patient. Yeah, this time uh, alert level three is uh, still up. So we have to um, assist, give assistance to our students wherever they are for the models that they will be used, the articulators, the teeth specimen and models, phantom heads, mechanical simulators, even consumable materials and supplies, portable equipments as very small dental units, amalgamators, hand instruments, other items because some of our students cannot go back to uh, school to pick 
pick up their their hand instruments and other equipment that they may need. So we opted to send them all, courier them all, wherever they are, as far as Cebu. So, and other items needed to the unique uh, situation of the students, uh, specifically uh, uh, gadget and learning and also connectivity. These are some pictures of how we uh, go about um, the virtual laboratory session. This is one student from her home. Uh, the teachers are there uh, at the panel and, one, and the student is also there. Another, another picture here. So there you go. Um, so they're working from home. They are uh, doing procedures from home. They are learning from anywhere. Even uh, making or practice of making dentures for a patient Although this is not a live, does not include a live patient, it's also done on a virtual laboratory session, monitored by the teacher. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I, before pre-pandemic, uh, predating the pandemic, uh, in 2007, uh, one of our faculty members have developed a centralized online dental education resources, uh, nicknamed Coders. So since then, it was being used by at least one course. Uh, these are the things that can be done there online, internet-based, uh, to give you an idea of how this will look like uh, if one had to enroll in this uh, uh, application that had been developed. So this is for a complete denture uh, prosthodontics. That's one of the courses. No? See some illustrations and... Uh, Topic one is there, topic two, and all the rest of the topics can be uh, accessed by the student and some illustrations. Even uh, video, asynchronous video demonstration of procedures are there. And then the, since this is a, a self-directed uh, learning also, of the procedure and uh, send it to the teachers via any platform and the teacher will comment on it. Even the setup of it can be viewed here. And this is the, uh, the uh, database for the error suggestions and how to correct them. Synchronous and the discussion forum, right? That's coders. And of course, it, it, uh, while it's not something new, but the, the pandemic really forced us to do something more of this uh, innovative uh, strategies. There are challenges, and among other things, the challenges that are been, uh, have been mentioned by the previous speakers are also through us, like a creation and implementation of uh, the redesign courses, supervision and giving of feedbacks is lacking or not accurate. We cannot check on the hands and body positioning Evaluation and assessment of the work is also not very good. And there's a questionable effectiveness in the skills acquisition. And most of all, the interaction with real patients is missing. So therefore, face-to-face sessions are inarguably necessary for the training of our students. We are anticipating the limited face-to-face -face sessions, but this is, you know, that without patients. So therefore, we we uh, followed the guidelines set forth by uh, the CHED uh, joint memorandum with DOH on the gradual reopening of campuses and also CMO, uh, which is specific for uh, preclinical courses and clinical density courses during the pandemic period. Remember that this at this time, it's alert level three. So restrictions are very strict. So what guided us mostly are uh, one of the things that we, we seek for guidance is the uh, NIOSH, National Institute for uh, Patient Safety and Health by the US, the hierarchy of controls, and also coming from uh, the, the Joint Memorandum and the CHED MO, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention of the USA, UP Manila Administration, and also headed by our chancellor. Uh, not only the guidance they provide, but also the logistics, the much needed logistics, and not uh, to uh, 
exempt uh, the UP system through our president uh, for extending logistics to us. The UP Pub Pub College of Public Health can also gave us some guidance and uh, consult, uh, recommendations on how to, to go about it. Plus the hospital infection control unit of the Philippine General Hospital, the Philippine Dental Association, and the Philippine Association of Dental Colleges. Um, um, all the colleges of dentistry in the, in the country are represented there. We are helping each other out. So we have done retrofitting, admin, administrative and engineering uh, controls. Uh, these are all, uh, you know, all familiar things that we do. We, this is alert level three. So therefore, RT-PCR tests are also required. Your health insurances, cyclic scheduling, holding our isolation area, and most of all, the personal monitoring and tracking system that UP Manila has developed uh, be uh, best. No? So we have to do this thing. Uh, before, it was only the UP Manila faculty and staff, but they included UP Manila upon request of the colleges, UP Manila students. And finally, we had this uh, at the same time that the College of Nursing had uh, had this uh, authorization to uh, reopen uh, among among uh, the College of Public Health and Physical uh, Physical Therapy programs limited face to face without patients. Before the pandemic, we have this uh, simulation room primarily for restorative dentistry, which is in use until the. Down happened with limited facilities, available laboratory rooms like the uh, biochemistry lab, uh, lab room and also the uh, dental materials lab room and converted them to a simulation uh, room. So we procured a lot of uh, these things, the mechanical simulators, and, and uh, posted them on. Uh, the rooms that were available. So now limited face-to-face -face is now possible. And the, the mechanical simulators are specific. There are three types of uh, things, uh, uh, simulators that we have procured. One is for restorative dentistry. The other one is periodontics. And the other one, and the, uh, the last one is uh, for prosthodontics, uh, complete dentures and removable partial dentures. The guy doing here is that uh, a cement-like material is uh, painted on the neck of the teeth right there, and it will be attached back to a, an articulator and mounted on a mechanical simulator where students can work on them. This one. So in the limited face-to-face -face for uh, laboratory, preclinical laboratories, we have been doing this for the uh, since last uh, academic year. Okay, going back to the context of dental education, the articulated jaw models right here, we know as uh, mechanical simulators, uh, is the gateway for real patients. But not until we were able to procure, or yeah, were able to uh, uh, receive a grant from a CHED IDIG. IDIG is uh, Institutional uh, Development and Innovative grants to procure the virtual reality haptic dental simulators, these BRH simulators. I believe that this is going to be, our college is going to be the first dental school in the country to have this. Uh, in a few weeks time, this the del delivery of these uh, machines will happen. And so we're excited about it and it should precede experiences, learning experiences prior to learning, uh, giving patient care for our students or our patients with a student. This is how it looks. Uh, I got these pictures from the internet kasi wala pa namang delivery. So this is from Nisin. This is the, the, the student station where uh, the student can work on a virtual patient. No mechanical head, no mechanical teeth. So this is all virtual uh, because it's uh, uh, equipped with haptic technology, uh, when uh, the student hit a structure that's not supposed to be hit, then uh, the haptic uh, feedback will, will be uh, uh, initiated. So, mararandaman nyo, parang gaming, no? internet gaming. 
So this is a very good development and uh, growing uh, awareness to uh, shifting not only to innovative and creative uh, learning modalities, but also technology mediated uh, training in dentistry. Uh, I, I agree that uh, the same as the College of Nursing or the nursing education, uh, dentistry education in the country is underinvested. Uh, there's no, uh, there's uh, underinvestment. There's some uh, need for uh, uh, giving more investment for the improvement of education of dentistry professionals. But this is not supposed to replace, the BRH is not supposed to replace the real patient. There's really a need for real patients uh, encounters with our, with our students. So we are anticipating limited face-to-face -face clinical sessions with patients this time. And there is a memorandum, again, a joint memorandum from CHED and DOH, allowing all programs that includes also activities uh, in the clinical areas and the CHED memorandum order also to supplement that, that joint memorandum agreement. Having that in mind, we accomplish many things. We again reinforce our administrative controls, getting ready for uh, the entrance of our patients. Uh, the signages, of course, are there. We beep, it, beep, beep them up. Safety protocols and rules are modified to accommodate patients. Dining areas are also uh, uh, dipped up and isolation and holding areas and many, many other things. Engineering control might, all, might also be addressed. Uh, in, in addition to exhaust and uh, ventilation circulation, the, the project that we know as renovation uh, and installation are conducted uh, ventilation system, which is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system. This is a ducted project funded by a, a university, the university, and also additional engineering devices, uh, specifically for aerosol generating procedures. There are, there are, there are lots of several of our procedures are uh, aerosol generating, so therefore uh, it's very dangerous, especially for the patients, for the ones who are not protected at the time of treatment. Siyempre, wala silang mask, ginagamot mo sila, no? wala silang protection. And then additional protocols to address these issues of uh, uh, patients coming in, uh, donning and doffing of uh, mask, uh, the PPEs, patients protocols, triage, supplies, beeping up of supplies for disinfection, PPEs, and other things, and other requirements emanating from gov government regulation as well as the university regulation. These are some pictures of where the triage is, right in the entrance of the college, and the welcome uh, poster, entrance containing some advices and rules here. Please take note that there is this QR code here for health monitoring and contact tracing. If the patient does not uh, have uh, the capability for QR technology, well, I cell phone, there are still old-fashioned forms that you should need to fill, fill out. And the entry, there's only but one entry in the college facilities. Uh, signages are there for reminders. And you have to pass this uh, security officer. Again, the QR code is there. The scanning uh, temperature is, is also available there. Uh, upon exit, there's also required scanning of temperature and hand sanitizing. Uh, reminders on the doning and doping technique, gloves, and uh, also the uh, gar uh, gar protective garments are all over the place. The dining area, al fresco dining ito, hindi siya enclosed, no? So, medyo may distancing pa rin ito. This was, the, this was already established uh, during the first uh, allowance for face-to-face, uh, -face, limited face-to-face. Uh, well, although our fresh pillion, merong uh, air circulation, natural air circulation, uh, we also set up some uh, forced ventilations. It is supposed to be the isolation holding area. You know, it's a very lonely space. And we hope that it's, it remains that way. It has not been used from the start. So meaning no infection had been registered in our end. So sana hindi nga magamit ito.
and of course the supplies, uh, the uh, the uh, has, hazmat uh, uh, garments, uh, gloves, also, and then uh, disinfection materials. Nandyan lahat yan. All free, given to uh, students, faculty, and support staff, and also the patients. The uh, the mask is categorized into level levels like level four is the N95, uh, depending on the exposures of the area. Like if you are doing it with a patient, if you are assigned in the clinical area with a patient, so yeah, this is a requirement. Otherwise, there are other types of masks that will be issued to anyone in the personnel. This is an example of uh, how we uh, the we, the uh, the uh, gowns that we have procured, this, is, this one is uh, disposable and the other one is washable, again, depending on the, uh, the type of exposure. We have these uh, engineering devices, uh, including the HEPA filters. Eh, nung unang bugso ng pandemic, bumili na kami kagad dito, so we might as well use it to augment our infection control uh, system. Now the HVAC system, uh, all operatories have this outlet, meaning air will be suctioned out towards this duct. Uh, pag, when the patient is lying down here, very close to the mouth. So therefore, in aerosol generating procedure, it's a suction itong, uh, this uh, outlet here. All uh, cubicles with dental units are equipped with these things there. They're included in the HVAC system. And the outlets for clean air is right there at the ceiling, uh, putting in night, not only clean air, but also cool air, air conditioning. And, and barriers are uh, uh, set up for individual cubicles for additional uh, protection. This uh, blue colored machines here, these are motors, which are responsible for suck suctioning out air from the rooms right there. On the other side are inlets. In other words, they, they now force clean air. Ayun pa yung isa at ayun pa yung dalawa. So, uh, that's our clinical chairman. Uh, this is the uh, air conditioning condensers. Uh, again, outlet siya, meron papunta doon sa loob ng clinical areas for cooler airs. Uh, several of these uh, condensers are on the corridors. This is the intraoral vacuum system. Uh, this vacuum system or high volume evacuator can be attached to uh, three to five dental chairs. So we have 10 of this, we procured 10 of this and about 30 of the chairs, uh, chosen chairs for AGPs, uh, procedures for uh, aerosol generating uh, things uh, can, be, can be used. Parang overkill na nga kasi meron pa kaming extra oral vacuum. There are about 50 of this. Again, for aerosol generating procedures, specifically on the chairs right there. And ito itsura niya. No? Hindi nga lang ito ginagamit pag uh, mechanical simulator. Of course, for picture purposes lang. Pag may patient, ganun ang dating. So any aerosol coming out, sinasuction out na yun ng machine. It's an extra oral vacuum system. And finally, a few days ago, we received the safety seal. We are now allowed to uh, uh, print this and post this in our building. In other words, we are now given a go signal to accept patients for our activities, learning activities. So, there we go. And here we go. Now, uh, allow me to show to uh, share with you a uh, video. Face to face, alert level three.
distancing uh, distancing on uh, the students who are working are also implemented. And supplies of materials are also ready for use, including uh, disinfection agents and sanitizing agents. This is now the clinical area that has been uh, retrofitted. This is the time where constructed where construction and renovation is happening. Now it's all done, ready for use. That's the outlet attached to every uh, operatory. Even the graduate school has been provided with this. That's a sliding barrier extension for other protection. That's the uh, high volume evacuator. Now it's all done. So we have finished the inspection. We also would like to thank the uh, help assistance by uh, the, the campus planning and development office of the UP, of UP Manila for helping us out here. Of course, the funding that uh, UP Manila has given us. Extra, or vac extra oral vacuum system. Full videos, there are about three videos, uh, can be accessed through the uh, website, the cd.upn.edu.ph. So before I close, I, I'd like to share with, all, with everyone that some of us in the college, as well as in other dental schools in the country, still hope that education will go back to the old ways once this pandemic ends. Back to normal, sabi na. Personally, I wouldn't desire to go back because there's nothing to go back to. Our so-called response to the pandemic, uh, such as the retrofitting, renovation of the entire college training facilities, must not be viewed. Though I not, I do not, I do not view it as our preparation for the new normal or better normal. This is the environment necessary industry in dentistry training long before. The pandemic revealed our inadequacies, incapacities, and disregards to the real situation in the clinical training vis-a-vis -vis the risks, perils, and dangers that go with them. Hard lessons indeed. Maybe we were just too lucky to have gone this far. So thank you, sir, so much, everyone, and good afternoon to all of you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, that's Dean Danny Tanong of the uh, College of Dentistry. My goodness. Grabe, grabe yung engineering environment. Saka, uh, Raymond, napansin mo yung mga... Nung nag, when the video, Sir Danny, nung nag-on yung video nyo, ay talagang yung hearts, yung palakpak, yung gano'n. No, kasi parang, but I, but I really like what you said, that this is not really the new normal. This is what we should have done from the very beginning, di ba? Parang may acceleration na nangyari dahil sa pandemic. So, uh, thank you so much. It was a wonderful presentation. So you're most welcome po. You're most welcome po. Yeah, you can see the appreciation of the audience. Naku, ang dami. Oh, Raymond, over to you. <laughs> Thank you, Dean Danny. Thank you to our three deans. Um, at this point, we'll ask our panel to switch on their videos. Uh, we'll begin our Q&A shortly. But before that, we'll take a very quick break for a special public service announcement today. Hi, ate. Gusto ko nang lumabas at makipaglaro. Eh, di ba magkakasakit daw tayo kapag lumabas? Magpiface mas naman ako eh. Kahit na, hanggat wala daw tayong injection, hindi tayo pwedeng lumabas at maglaro. Ano ba yan? Takot pa naman ako sa injection. Huwag ka magalala. Parang kagat lang daw ng langgam yun. Talaga? Eh, natatakot pa rin ako. 
Pwede sabay na lang tayo. Pa-injection? Oo, oh, syempre. Loves kita eh. Para makapaglaro na tayo. Dahil mahal ko kayo, magpapabakuna ako. Ay, mga bata, magpapakuna na kayo. Stay safe and stay well. Mga bata, magpasama na sa Bakuna Center. Thank you. The COVID Communication Public Service Announcement is one of the many creative outputs of the Stop COVID Deaths team to push for pediatric vaccination for children aged 5 to 18. We hope you'll be able to share this video clip in all your social media po, no? And stay safe and stay well. Sana po magpabakuna na po lahat, lalo-lalo po yung ating mga senior citizens at mga bata. Over to you, Dr. Susie. Thank you so much, Raymond. Um, we are going to... Um... We're going to have our panel discussion now, and we'll have. Uh, I don't know, I can't see the no, I can't see the screen, but we have Dean Charlotte Chong of UP College of Medicine, we have Sheila, yes, and then yes. we have Dean Danny. And um, I think there are a number of questions in the QA, but let me get the ball rolling and ask all of you to, to respond. No? One of the things that struck me when you were making your presentations is that the teachers have to do things very differently now. In fact, Sheila knows this really well. You know, parang, uh, even teaching online is very, very different from teaching face-to-face. -face. So I'd like to know, what, what are you facing in terms of the faculty? Because it's one thing to have the infrastructure and the equipment and all of the new ways of, of teaching learning, but how about the, the mindset of the teachers and the faculty? Maybe we'll start with Sheila. Sheila, ikaw muna. Thank you for that question. You know. so that, but that's true. I, I think the acceptance of the faculty uh, should really be there to, to consider all the changes that should happen as we shift to uh, flexible learning. And in fact, uh, that, that was actually one of the things that we initially worked on even before the issuance of CHED. Uh, how, how ready are the faculty members in uh, doing the new modes of teaching and learning? And there are three things to consider. So one, of course, is not only the content expertise. So as we know, you are usually an expert of something, a specialization. Uh, and that, that we consider as a given, that if your specialty is adult health, if your specialty is maternal child, at least for the nursing sector, so, so that's a given that we assume that everyone has as a faculty member. But in terms of technology, how well do you know technology in terms of how to use it in your teaching and learning? So that's one that we needed to assess. And then the third one is pedagogy. How do you know what are the teaching learning activities that will fit the need for the content, the need for the, uh, the, need for the psychomotor skill you need to teach? How do you fit also the use of the technology that we are trying to give to our students? So, kaya yung tatlong areas na yon are really important in terms of preparing faculty members. And I guess the fourth one that sometimes we take for granted is also the mental health of our uh, faculty. And because they cannot really function uh, at optimum level if they're not safe, they're not feeling safe, their families are not safe. And uh, if there's no mecha mechanism also for the university to ensure that faculty are vaccinated, that there's a way of referring um, self and families once they are actually become um, positive for COVID. So I guess these are all uh, things that we have learned along the way in the, in the last two and a half years, that it's not only just suddenly you shift to uh, teaching online. And we've heard some of the uh, uh, in the at least in the uh, in the persons what we call that the interviews that we've done with the students, so we also had to ask them uh, in terms of uh, how ready are they in terms of uh, shifting to this new uh, teaching and learning modes. Again, another thing that could be considered by the faculty members. So I'll stop there, Doc Susi. Thanks a lot, Sheila. Charlotte, what are your thoughts on that? What's your experience on uh, all these new ways of teaching and? a faculty that's used to doing things in a different way. Yeah, alam mo, um, Susie, when uh, I came in as dean in 2018, the ASEAN University Network came to accredit us. No? Look at our basic medical education program. And one of their key findings is that we only had 8% of our courses in blended learning. And that's been true, despite all the efforts of uh, previous deans 
of encouraging our faculty to actually uh, consider flexible and blended learning. Wala eh. Wala talaga eh. But when uh -huh. the COVID-19 came in, walang choice eh. So they had really had to just uh, just uh, shift to remote uh, education. And uh, what we did was basically, alam mo na, marami mga, well, I don't want to say Jurassic, no? But uh, many were not really, <laughs> many were not really uh, comfortable with, uh, with this uh, internet and um, all these uh, gadgets and so the younger faculty members had to teach the more senior ones and for all the different learning platforms that we had we had like teaching sessions we had uh, champions for all these different uh, learning strategies so may mga talagang one-on-one na turuan na nangyari among faculty members and we have to give credit to our younger faculty who basically guided our senior faculty members and that's how we were able to do it until people became used to it. And I don't know whether uh, it's safe to say that perhaps majority of our faculty will will now really choose flexible types. No, uh, perhaps for assessment, guru in person, you want to really see the skills. But maybe for small group discussions, okay, na yung yung uh, through a virtual learning platform. So and. Even if I look at the virtual learning platform that I have, like uh, discussing with students, it's real time. Eh? You, they, they send you their discussion. Uh, I put in there some of the key uh, journal articles that they probably want to read. They give me feedback as to what their thoughts are. So at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm here looking at the discussion of my <laughs> students and giving them feedback. Para pagising nila sa umaga, makikita nila yung feedback. Na binigay ko. And then uh, the, the exchange is very robust. So I really like how, how it's done. And it's even more individualized. Eh? Because when they're when you're giving feedback individually, uh si group means na hihiapi mga studyante. But when it's individualized like that, they can really discuss with you and they can point yeah. out point out and medyo maliyata yung sinasabi mo dito, hindi hindi siya napapahiya, di ba? So I right. think uh, that's also very important. Um so I, I believe um, the new normal or the better normal will be the, really a flexible type of, uh, of delivering medical education. And we still struggle with the fact that should we invest in the exam soft browser where, well, we put it in our procurement plan. We want to purchase more than 200 uh, iPads so that when they come in for their exams, no, we, have, like, we can lock in the browser so that they can do their exams. No? But actually, online assessments is now ongoing with our LU3. Eh? And it seems to me that we're quite comfortable with that already. But uh, supposedly for the higher years, probably that's where we want them to be in campus and we'll have to do it in a more standardized manner. The performance uh, uh, assessments will have to be done in a more standardized manner. And once the new building is up, uh, Chancellor has seen the clinical skills uh, center of Harvard, we intend to actually follow that. So we have like more than 500 square meters of space. We'll put in like treatment clinics, like any other clinic, and we'll have uh, cameras in place. We'll probably resort to now standardized patients so that our assessments will be more standardized. And uh, I, I believe we will be able to do it. Uh, we've been able to get the funding for that already from UP system. So in the next year or so, I uh, expect that that will be probably in place. Yeah, it's very interesting, no? Parang, ano, eh, parang COVID gave us an opportunity to do something that we always wanted to do, no? which was to do more remote online uh, kind of learning to optimize the time that can be done also for the face-to-face -face and skills learning. No? So very, very interesting. But I, 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 I understand what you're saying. And I really also appreciate what Sheila said about the mental health of the faculty. Kasi stressful din yung bigla kang have to deal with technology na you're not used to it, no? And so I think, you know, this is really a learning curve for everybody, but it seems uh, you're all doing well. How about Dean Danny? What is your, what is your experience on the faculty? Uh, yes, parang uh, the same as uh, what the other two deans have uh, said. Uh, before the start of the pandemic, there were very, very few Siguro, baka hindi lang lower than 8% pa nga eh. Siguro, mga 5% lang ang uh, gamit ng technology. Yung coders na yun, no? uh, we were the ones who were do using it because uh, the developer was one of my, my colleagues in uh, our section. So, alam ko yung nangyayari doon. 
But traditionally talaga ang mga teachers din namin, especially the older ones, talagang ano yan eh, parang comfort zone eh. Kasi yung, yung mga older, uh, ano, pag, pag ano yan, they come prepared always eh. They do not have to prepare anything. Parang, parang ano na yan eh, from the heart na eh. Like me, when I lecture in, on, on my expertise, I don't, uh, hindi ako kinakabahan na eh. Kanina lang ako kinakabahan dahil hindi ko naman expertise ito eh. <laughs> but anyway, but now, because of the pandemic na, like Din Chong was saying, wala ka namang magagawa eh. Nandun yung iyakan namin. Hindi lang, not only the students and their parents, you, they really hate what's happening in terms of the technology uh, thing in uh, learning. Ayaw na ayaw nila. But more the, the teachers, no? nag-iiyakan, no? uh, especially at the start of the classes. Yung, uh, uh, ano, ano yung canvas na nagkagulo pa ng konti. Remember, din sila, no? Nagka, nagkagulo yung konti yun, di ba? On that day before, the day before opening classes, wala pa yung mga list or whatever they call it. Nag-iiyakan, no? So, parang sabi, ayaw na, ayaw na. Parang gano'n ang sinasabi ng teachers. No? Pero siyempre, life should go, go on, di ba? Tuli-tuli pa rin naman. They, now, I'm happy to report the last survey, the last question that I've answered uh, to the UP Manila uh, initiative. Uh, almost 90% of all our faculty members are using technology for the blended learning and the online the platforms that we are using now. Ngayon, ang problema ko naman, Dr. Susi and Dr. Raymond, pagkakaroon na kami ng face-to-face, ayaw naman nilang bumalik kasi baka talaga bang safe na sa kolehiyo and so parang yung mga teachers, <laughs> mga students and and ano eh and parents. Pupuntahin namin mga anak namin diyan. Sila din mga teachers. Oh, magre-report ako. Hindi dito na lang ako, may comorbidity ako eh. Parang na. Uh, <laughs> so, ayun, sa pirita naman ibabalik mo naman sila ngayon sa on-site teaching learning. So, I think ganun talaga, no? Ganun talaga. But uh, I agree with you, Dr. Susi. Tong pandemic na to has really taught us so many things, no? Uh, lahat ng hindi natin na we take for granted, lahat ng kala natin, hindi natin, wala tayong time gawin, wala tayong time isipin man lang. Because of the pandemic, na isip pala natin at posible palang gawin talaga. So, yeah. yun, yung experience natin sa kolehiyo. Eh, yeah, thank you very much, Dean Danny. Really a lot of insight on on your part, no? Uh, sa akin, nagulat ako doon sa nag-iiyakan yung mga teacher, no? But, Again, going back to what Sheila said about mental health, no, it, it's really very ano, overwhelming. It's really very overwhelming. The pandemic has been overwhelming. No? So we really have to just take care of each other, be sensitive, no, and try to find ways to help out when people are, are stressed out, whether they're the teachers or the students who, you know, like Charlotte is saying, they don't even have you know, load for, for the virtual learning. Anyway, Raymond, let's go to you. I think you have picked out some questions on the chat. Oh, chat Q&A. Sige, Raymond, go ahead. Ikaw naman. Also, I was uh, equally surprised with the, ano, with the statement from Dean Danny kasi you often hear just the students yung nag-iiyakan pag uh, yes. ano, this the yes. teachers this time. Um, so, our most upvoted question here in the Q&A uh, and I think a lot of our audience uh, will really appreciate an answer po. No? So a lot of new healthcare professionals, physicians, nurses, dentists na rin po, uh, they're still lacking in clinical skills when they go to clinical practice. Uh, the question is when will they be allowed to go on regular duty and no longer do hybrid limited face-to-face -face interaction with patients? Meanwhile, how do all the deans ensure that the students are able to achieve desired clinical competencies? I think... The, the question po, if I may tweak it, is that uh, is there really a belief that that students are able to achieve the desired clinical competencies uh, comparing it to years past, to, to borrow that, the term of uh, Dean Chong, the Jurassic past, uh, if it's something na ano, baka it might not necessarily be helping in achieving the desired clinical competencies. So, uh, pabalik naman po tayo. Let's start with the Dean Danny. Uh, do you believe na the students, po, the dentistry students, are achieving the desired clinical competencies uh, with the strategies, sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Raymond, I will start by saying na uh, yun nga ang isa sa mga personally kinakatakot ko, no? That the students who are products of uh, 
these uh, platforms or uh, modalities baka ano sila no uh, stigmatize parang sabi ko kailan ka gumaduate o ganitong hindi ah ikaw yung ganito ikaw yung ganoon no? so if they're seeking employment for example in a dental clinic baka kailangan magandog ko pa sila ng extra training no parang ganoon pero i believe i believe kasi uh, our our uh, direction and our uh, mandate in uh, the college of dentistry is really uh, the, competi- the the minimum entry competencies is, is is really the outcome that we wanted to achieve among the students in other words safe beginners safe beginners yun yung talagang bottom line pa rin yun. so in other words kahit naman product anong uh, old system like me for example when i am a fresh graduate ang dami ko pang hindi alam uh, parang start no vis pa ko talaga so uh, that, that's the concept of a uh, 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 continue lifelong learning so you learn you learn through through the years that you engage into the practice no uh papabilis lang yon kung magte-training ka like formally in a uh, uh, postgraduate training magana mapapabilis ng konti so i think while while uh, hindi hindi evident na kasi parang parang it's it's very easy to assume na the other people like us for example yung Jurassic pero di pa yata ako Jurassic. Uh, <laughs> train sa ganitong system. Dahil, dahil ba hindi siya na-train ng ganong kagaya ng pagkakatrain ko, eh, hindi na siya magiging kagaya mo. So, yun ang basic question. And I don't believe that. Kasi pag entry competencies, eh, uh, starter in the, in the profession. So, lahat tayo pantay-pantay. Although, there are some, some who has the edge, probably. Pero halos generally, lahat pantay-pantay. And it's up to the to the individual, to the professional, to really amass some more, uh, gather some more uh, uh, skills and knowledge as uh, he continues to go in deep into the profession. So, mahirap sabihin na hindi trained well yung mga gritong platform. It's yet to be evidenced by anything. So. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dean Danny. How about Dean Sheila for the nurses? Yeah, so for us, uh, we shifted to outcomes-based education uh, in 2018. So we're actually graduating our first batch uh, from this uh, curriculum model. And uh, very true yung sinabi ni Dean Danny, no, na we really are looking at the outcomes. So before we, we ensure that we will graduate our students, that they have passed the uh, they have shown the demonstration of the competencies that we're looking for. And uh, this is where uh, we wish that we had more time for face-to-face. But having said that, that because of the limitation, we, we did bring them back uh, earlier. I think uh, my question kasi ako nakita kanina na hindi pa ba bumabalik. But as I said in my presentation kanina, uh, even last year, we've started bringing back our uh, third-year and fourth-year students to the not only the skills lab, but the hospital but um, so what we're trying to do is to ensure at least the, the competencies that are, uh, that are being asked for as a graduate of the program, the BS nursing program, will be uh, delivered uh, by our graduates that they'll be fit for practice, they're ready for practice when they graduate. But uh, also we are aware that if there are needs by our partner institutions like hospitals, to do bridging programs. So we're also open to that, uh, to give more opportunities for, for nurses to take on some more competencies on based on some uh, other skills, I guess, like, uh, like for example, again, the intravenous uh, therapy. I mean, there are certain requirements also by the Professional Regulations Commission uh, that we have to uh, ensure before they graduate, like actual deliveries of babies, um, uh, surgery, uh, assist. So. So I, I, we're still complying with those same um, uh, same uh, requirements by the PRC to ensure that our graduates are ready for practice. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dean Sheila. So I, I'll call on uh, Dean Charlotte for her uh, response. Po. Uh, we'll just wait for the Dean. Hello. Uh, well, actually, um, I would say that uh, when we graduate, no, our, our, our physicians... Uh, they're basically a multi-potential graduate. As I mentioned, they can be general practitioners, but they can also move on to become specialists and have further training. 
they can also go into research or even go to teaching. Uh, we're encouraging our graduates also to consider that actually. So um, of course, the, the trepidation and uh, anxiety could be there, especially for the graduates of those who had very limited face-to-face uh, -face the first batch. But I would say that our recent graduates already had uh, actually a lot of patients already because, as you know, PGH started have, uh, after the vaccination. No, we we actually asked all our graduates to already um, to, uh, report no to PGH, and PGH has slowly increased the number of cases uh, to almost like uh, maybe around seventy percent of pre-pandemic levels. So we're quite confident that uh, they're already getting the skills that they need. And uh, this recent batch of graduates will probably be more uh, be more confident than the, the the batches of maybe last year. Yun yung pinaka nahirapan is last year. Eh. Before that, okay yon. Itong recent batch, okay to. I think the batch of last year. But having said that, um, we saw them during residency, itong batch of last year, and uh, they were able to catch up. So those who ventured to um, further training for specialization should would have been able to catch up. And those who opted for research, they're doing very well. And those who have opted to go to the communities and doctor to the barrios uh, actually did very well as well. So I believe that there's a certain redundancy in the training of uh, medicine in uh, the UP College of Medicine. If you look at LU5 and basically uh, LU6, almost pareho lang yan halos eh. So if you, can, if you miss out on LU5 for the OPD, you'll be able to still catch up for your, for your LU6 and then still catch up for your, for your LU7. So basically, you have three years of, uh, of clinical years that where you are able to actually optimize uh, patient encounters and build up your confidence. Yeah, thank you, Charlotte. Ano talaga yun, Raymond, no? Parang actually, for the health professions, it's a lifetime of learning, you know? So I think yung sinasabi mo, Charlotte, na nahahabol nila yung skills. Talagang kung gusto mo naman magiging magaling, your skills will develop. Eh, no? uh, siguro may delay lang ng konti. Pero ano eh, kung gugustuhin, talagang the skills will, will be developed because, because you want to. No? And you'll find opportunities to, to do it. So I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, while there is an issue around skills, as you can see from the three presentations, lahat talaga ginagawa para hindi maiwanan yung skills part. Hindi puro nandito lang sa ulo yung, yung alam, ng, alam ng mga studyante natin. Now, we would like to continue. I'm sure there's so many things we can talk about, but we don't have much time. Raymond, let's go to your questions, uh, to the fun quiz. Go ahead. We have three questions. Can we have the slido on the screen? Thank you so much. Shall we are seeing the questions on the fun quiz po in the Zoom. Um, so, it's, it's more of an opinion, the first question, are we going back to what was before in terms of teaching and learning? 67% in the Zoom chose uh, yes, uh, with 33% uh, saying no, and then ito po, 59% uh, naman in Slido saying yes, 41% saying no. Um, next question. Uh, with limited face-to-face -face patient encounters, what are the alternative ways of developing clinical skills? Okay, so dito po, um, and as mentioned din po uh, by the three deans, uh, there was important in terms of the simulation. 54% uh, in Zoom chose that as their preferred answer po, no? And 73% naman po in Slido chose uh, simulation as well. Uh, uh, yung this ay sorry dito po kasi may all of the above dito po pala may ano may walang all of the above sorry i'm looking at two different questions in zoom kasi there's no all of the above but in slide there's an all of the above which is the correct answer no uh, so uh, we'll go on to the last question and finally which practices can minimize risk of covid-19 infection of the students um 80% in zoom uh, said all of the above and 88% uh, in Slido naman po, said all of the above. So maraming maraming salamat po and that's, hopefully that's something that you could take away uh, as part of the message po for our webinar. And uh, before we ask each of our three deans for their parting message, we'd also like to inform you that we all know that you are busy with uh, with all of your work, etc., uh, etc., et what we have in, if you go to www.youtube.com, is what we lovely call the SED shorts. So, ang SED shorts po natin, they're very short, consumable videos, 
uh, full of uh, nuggets of wisdom po and hopefully that's something that you will also be able to watch uh, especially if you have the time or when you're watching the play, the webinar on the playback uh, if you go to www.youtube.com forward slash tvupph and on the screen right now for uh, those who are in the zoom Wala po kaming hiwalay na inilalabas na panel uh, na evaluation poll. Ito na po yun, which is the panel discussion poll you are seeing. It's a four-point Likert scale consisting of five questions as follows. The panelists demonstrated thorough knowledge of the topic. The panelists were well prepared and organized. The panelists spoke clearly and audibly. The panelists used appropriate language with technical, technical medical jargons adequately explained. And finally, the panelists contributed to new perspectives and knowledge on managing various key health issues. We will not be closing our evaluation, Paul, as we move on to the parting messages of our three speakers. Dr. Susie? Sige, Raymond, before we continue. So, wala tayong sagot dun sa number one, ano? Parang, ang... ang it was ang more of an opinion kasi, Dr. Susie. Are you... Oh, parang, ano, parang, mm -hmm. I think from our three deans, it looks like we're not going back exactly Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, correct. Right? And in fact, it's much, much, much better. No? Much, much, much better. Parang, um, I think, ano, ano, parang nagkaroon ng opportunity talaga mapush tong online, online learning, which has so many benefits. But I think what we're saying also is that definitely for the health professions, you've got to have face-to-face -face learning and there has to be real interaction with patients. Hindi talaga... Hindi yun magagawa virtually. No? So I think, uh, yeah, so we're, we're not going back exactly to what it was, but we're going back to, I think, something that's much, much better. Okay, so we have a few minutes left for our um, speakers to give their parting words to our audience. So we're going to start with Dean Danny of the College of Dentistry. Dean Danny, go ahead. Oh, yes. Uh... Actually, in parting words ko na sa last slide ko na, pero, pero siguro, I, uh, in addition, uh, I would like to appeal to the educators in the academe of dentistry to really contemplate on uh, um, changing the, the pedagog pedagogical uh, strategies that we are used to doing. Uh, you know, the old uh, passion uh, look on uh, competencies are normally counted by numbers. Ang tawag ko dyan, tyranny of numbers eh. So let's focus on the outcome-based ideology. In other words, if you, re you normally require five of these procedures that can be done, eh baka naman sa dalawa no, na, na kita mo na yung kanyang outcome, tama na. Huwag nang ipilit ng ganun. Parcel of uh, uh, adapt. the course parang nag-freeze yata si Dean Danny ah o ako lang manakita na Raymond no I think uh, he froze uh, so I'm oh, okay. okay. oh, medyo... oh, Dean Danny yan 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 balik kayo Dean Danny oh. meron kayong half a minute na hindi namin naintindihan okay. ay nawala na talaga si Dean Danny paano ba rin Okay, pag, naka, pag mas magandang connection niya. Let's go to Sheila, Dean Sheila, oh. the college of nursing. Okay, so I think uh, COVID-19 oh. is not the last <laughs> uh, pandemic. Well, sana last na, no? But I think we really have to be uh, ready and uh, especially the education sector. We have to be more uh, resilient in terms of how to push for our uh, quality, excellent uh, teaching learning methods, lalo na sa UP na malaki yung expectation, of course. So, so we want to ensure that uh, our uh, faculty, our students, our staff are ready uh, to deliver uh, uh, what's needed to ensure quality education for, uh, for nursing, uh, in our case, for, for nursing. And this is not only for pre-service, we're also looking at continuing professional development of other uh, of our uh, in, uh, of our uh, colleagues uh, nurses in practice so we hope that uh, uh, we can continue to partner with uh, of course the university in giving us the support in what's needed to ensure that the innovations will happen and also our other partners in the community because we've been also working with the department of health 
uh, and also with the Commission on Higher Education to ensure that uh, we can deliver excellence in nursing education. So thank you for this opportunity to share what we are doing in the UP College of Nursing. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I don't know if we have Dean Danny back. Raymond, is he back now? Wala pa rin. Oh, sige. Let's go to Dean Charlotte of the College of Medicine. Charlotte, go ahead. Yeah, parting words. Actually, uh, as you can see, we've done um, we've done our best to be able to deliver the best medical education despite all the challenges of the pandemic. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's a Dr. Sabayan Bill where SOCs now are really coming up with more medical schools for our country uh, because of this law. No? Uh, and uh, the, the onus of responsibility is becoming higher for our country to be able to produce uh, competent, high-quality doctors that will serve our country with dedication, compassion, and uh, service. And I think government has to support us in terms of being able to improve connectivity in our air, in the remote areas of our country to allow access of our patients to clinical services and even to, to competent care in our hospitals. I think that that drive for universal healthcare is here. So we have to make our medical uh, graduates ready for universal healthcare. That's another challenge because it's going to have a paradigm shift on the way we also educate them. We need to see less corruption in government, uh, especially with PhilHealth <laughs> um, and uh, other agencies. Uh, we need to be able to, to provide solutions out of the box to basically uh, inspire our medical graduates to, because alam mo nakaka discourage pagkaganon but if we if they see that government and uh, they are basically is doing everything um, for the Filipino people then all the more our graduates will be so much inspired to serve no uh, ang masama nga doon if uh, is up to now if we have graduates who serve uh, remote communities they get reg tag and uh, and it's really discouraging for most of them um so uh, I would say that uh, my parting words would really consist of uh, a whole of society approach, uh, an approach where there's equity, uh, there's inclusivity, uh, less corruption, uh, more generosity, uh, esprit de corps, bayanihan of all sectors uh, in our country to be able to lift, lift us up from uh, the all the problems that we've had in the past, uh, because that's the only way we really can uh, improve healthcare in our country. And I think the College of Medicine has done its very best to be able to prepare these uh, this medical graduates to be the future leaders and also the future educators of for medicine in our country. So yun lang sin ang gusto ko sabihin, Susie. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, uh, Dean Charlotte Chong, UP College of Medicine. Okay, so we have a brief summary Dean Danny is back, Dr. Susie. Ano, ano? Dean Danny is back. Ay, <laughs> Dean Danny is back. O, Dean Danny, taputin niyo yung inyong... Taputol kayo eh. Sige, go ahead po. I think he dropped off again. But, uh, no, Dean no, no, Danny, no. can you unmute yourself, sir? Go ahead, sir. Okay. Okay na. Yes, sir. Okay, go. go ahead, sir. Okay, so my parting words actually is contained in the last slide, no? Pero I will uh, probably add that the appeal to the dental uh, education members of the academy, the dental education and training, to be more uh, patient and more open-minded in terms of uh, training our students, our future oral health professionals. Uh, let's stop counting uh, on the... Uh, 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 um, you know, the numbers of uh, requirements that you need the students to do. Let's stop the tyranny of numbers and let's focus on the outcomes that can be demonstrated and observed across the courses. Kasi kung dito lang sa isang course na ito, lima ang hinihingi mo, sa kabila, lima rin, eh pwede mo bang nakita mo naman dun sa kabila? Eh di, tignan mo na rin. So integrated yung approach ng clinical training, hindi segmented or... Uh, alienated. Ang nangyayari kasi, kadalasan, alienated ka dun sa course mo, hindi mo alam nangyayari dun sa kabila. So baka nandun na yung learning experience, baka all you have to do is just coordinate the entire uh, department of clinical dentistry training program. So yun lang siguro ang, ang gusto kong ipahayag as parting words to my colleagues in the dental academy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's Dean uh, Danny Magtanong of VP. 
College of Dentistry. Okay, we've got a summary from the Deputy Director of the Philippine General Hospital, Dr. Stella Marie Legaspi Jose. Go ahead, Stella. Take it away. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, um, we have a very interesting webinar. And um, we have a very interesting webinar this afternoon. And common to all the deans are the, that they are all forward looking. And even before the pandemic, they were already all into online or virtual learning. And uh, simulation was, uh, was an important aspect in education for all of them, for, for the College of Medicine, Nursing, and Dentistry. Dentistry even had the virtual reality haptic dental simulator. And uh, they had uh, a hybrid learning, and these are all instituted. The university purchased the canvas, and also we have the UP virtual learning environment, and the dentistry had the coder. So all of these were far, far before it was uh, asked of us. No? And uh, all the deans, their primary concern were the students. Dean Chong said, walang iwanan. And laptops were given to all students who who were did not have laptops. We sent course packs to the provinces, and she also mentioned the beds. So this is the this is the monitoring of uh, COVID symptoms in all our students and also our healthcare workers. For nursing, they also had the course packs, and they added uh, their uh, the dean dean uh, Sheila mentioned the, their concern for the students' mental health and also they use the best for dentistry they made sure that all students had one-on-one -on -one with the simulator and they also use the best so their their concern is really for the welfare of our students the another aspect that uh, i would like to emphasize is all three all three um, colleges had a devoted and dedicated faculty Sabi nga, Jurassic, but still they tried to learn, they tried to update themselves in the latest innovative teaching strategies. And another is university support. The university supported all their requests. No? So all colleges had renovation and installation of the ventilation or the HVAC system. They had additional uh, engineering devices like in dentistry for the aerosol generating procedures and the retrofitting and uh, administrative and engineering controls were put into place. As to the question that do they have the skills necessary for a doctor, nurse, or dentist, my answer is a yes. Because when you do simulation, the repetitive motion makes it already uh, ingrained in you so that even without coaching, you'll be able to do it yourself already. So that is what we learned in, in uh, MTTC that uh, before you go to a patient, you should try first the simulation exercise. And it is really very apt in this, in this pandemic. Uh, that's all, Susie. Back to you. Oh, thank you so much, Stella. What an excellent question. Very good. So thank you so much, Stella. You can see all the hearts and the clapping there for you. OK. Next week, nako, we've got a nice topic na naman and we have two very, very powerful speakers for you, okay? So our topic is Baha, Landslide, at COVID-19. And I think many of you saw the photographs of Banawe, yung mga, ano, gumuhu yung mga bahay, no, naglandslide sa Cordillera. And um, we, we have two people who you really like, okay? So one of your favorites, Dr. Mahar Lagmay, is going to talk about, uh, you know, these landslides, mga baha sa mga lugar na hindi nangyayari, no? And he's going to explain how this happens and what the frontliners need to know about that. And of course, no, on the health side, we have one of the leading epidemiologists in the Department of Health, Dr. Rio Magpantay, who is actually Regional Director of the Department of Health uh, CHD Cordillera. So don't miss it, okay? Lalo na yung mga nasa norte, please ano, invite everyone to attend this uh, to attend this particular webinar because you will learn both the science part of landslides and floods, which is becoming more frequent, 
and also what the health sector response has to be and what the preparation has to be given. This is becoming very common and um, common but unpredictable now where it's going to happen. Okay, Raymond, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Susie. So please don't forget to join us next week. No, uh, We are seeing on the screen the results of our evaluation poll with at least 94%, 93% of our uh, attendees indicating they strongly agree with all of the questions in the evaluation poll. So really very consistent. Maraming maraming salamat po. Consistent po with our previous webinars and thank you so much to all those who put in their answers as part of the evaluation poll. But before we conclude our program, we would like to thank the very hardworking team behind the Stop COVID That's webinar series. Without each and every one of you, we won't be able to churn out quality content week in and week out. So maraming salamat po sa bawat isa sa inyo. And finally, all Stop COVID Deaths webinars are archived for viewing at the TBUP YouTube channel for your convenience. You just need to go to youtube.com forward slash TVUPPH and you'll be able to see all 108 webinars and our SED Shorts po, no? And webinar 109 after this webinar. So magkita-kita po tayo ulit next Friday. This formally closes our webinar for the week. So, again, Friday, 12 noon to 2 p.m. It's a date. Together, we can stop COVID deaths. So, keep safe, keep healthy. See you online. <laughs>